Welcome to the Glassworking Shop. Well, it's been a while since I've made a video. I've been practicing glassworking, doing stuff that is not quite ready to uh, share yet, and working on some other projects, finishing up some inqualas and working on some new ideas. And speaking of new ideas, the new idea, the subject of this video is a new idea for the integrated lathe workstation. And that's what I'm sitting at right here. And it's still a work in progress, it's by no means finished, but I think there's some interesting ideas going on here. First of all, the lathe is elevated above a work surface, and that gives plenty of space to put tools and glass and projects in progress. Um, also, it's a, a custom welded steel stand. The uh, one of the, probably the most interesting part of it is the torch holding rig. Now, when I started work on this project, I tried using uh, a similar design from the electromagnets on the Inquala and had electromagnets on all the axes. And it worked, but it was a lot of complexity kind of big and bulky. There's always the concern that if the power goes out with the torch mounted on something with electromagnets that the, the torch may drop into an unsafe position. And so for a variety of reasons, this is about the fifth prototype of this that I've made, for a variety of reasons I abandoned the active magnetic control and chose instead to use friction. And unlike a lot of uh, frictional uh, stuff that I see out there, I actually put some effort into doing it nicely. And so I've got custom machined parts with Teflon washers and let me get the adjuster tool and the ability to adjust the tension using a hex driver to give it just enough so it doesn't so it doesn't move on its own but not so much that it's annoying so that seems to be nice and the same with the torch it pretty much stays where you put it but it's kind of nearly effortless to move around um, another thing about the integrated lathe workstation is tools are off to the side on a custom-made tool rack. Water bucket is off to the side. Um, I like to have tools on a tool rack. It seems to, to make a lot more sense uh, than just having tools spread out on a bench. Um, let me move the camera here and get uh, a bit of a close-up. So here's a close-up of the lower assembly and I have a uh, commercially available linear ball bearing, uh, bronze bushings on the rotating surfaces, then uh, a couple of uh, plates here that grip a uh, disc in the center. The disc is rigidly attached to the shaft and on each side of the disc is a little Teflon washer and then I have uh, Belleville washers, which are very short travel springs that uh, are under each screw head so that by tightening the screw, you can apply a little bit of spring pressure to the bottom plate and you know, tighten it to, um, onto the Teflon, increasing the frictional force. And this is the same uh, design used on all of the joints. They're all uh, spring, uh, Belleville springs and Teflon washers. At the back of the workstation I have a rig using linear bearings for moving the Bunsen's. I've also got this little handle, you can see that I'm pulling on it here, so that I can move the Bunsen's around uh, to whatever position that I need and then get them out of the way when they're not needed. Uh, this little lathe, because it's got, it's such a small lathe, I can't actually put the Bunsen under the workpiece, 
but this turns out to be a, a perfectly acceptable substitute. What's nice about this arrangement is that I can reach under the lathe to move, to grab the little handle and move the Bunsen's around. Other Bunsen mounts that I've seen require that you actually have to touch the Bunsen, which kind of gets your hand into the, into the heat zone, especially when the Bunsen is running. And with this scheme, I can move the Bunsen's around protected from the heat while they're running and have pretty good control and this actually works quite well. I also rigged up a plumbing system that uh, has a, a couple of valves on it for uh, switching blow tube between the two sides of the lathe as well as um, being able to connect vacuum uh, by just using a valve. Um, I don't know how much of this may be applicable to other lathes, but the work is still a work in progress. So a question might arise, is this ever going to be turned into a commercial product? I don't know, maybe. I'd be very interested to get some opinions from glass workers and see if there's any interest. This, at the moment, this is the one and only prototype that exists but I'm working with a couple of other glass workers and I'm going to be installing it on their lathes um, in the near future and we'll get some testing done with some other people and see how it goes. And depending on how the testing goes, it may end up turning into a commercial product or it may not. Uh, please let me know if you're interested. The challenge with turning this into a commercial product is the wide variety of lathes that are out there. And it's unlikely, since I only have one lathe and the people I know are a small number of people, or actually the people I know that are within reasonable distance to travel to, uh, have a small amount of uh, variety available. And so if it did ever turn out to be a commercial product, it's likely that it would be more like a, a kit of parts, a modular system uh, that could be either purchased to fit, modified to fit. Um, maybe I make the machine parts and whoever gets it figures out how to adapt a, a bracket or uh, a screw or whatever. Um, whether or not somebody would ever want to drill a hole into their lathe is a question. Some people don't care. Some people would say, I'm never going to do that. Um, the question is still unresolved, and um, I'm sure that uh, ideas will, will pop up as the project proceeds. So that's all I have today. Thank you for watching. It's been fun.